is it a deal breaker if someone asks you out on a first date, but then they expect to split the bill with you? I'd like to pull a power move on the first date and I offer to pay and see what they do. Honestly, I'm going to let you pay because paying your fair share isn't a power move. It's the bare minimum. If they were like, yeah, you can pay or we can split it. Would you go on a second date? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. So it's a test for you. It's a test. It's a test. Okay, since girls like crap tests so much, here's a crap test that men can do. When you ask her out for the first time, take a walk in the park because it's free. I do not accept a coffee or a walk as a possible date option and neither do Now, if she says yes, it means she's attracted to you. If she says no or wants to go someplace you spend money, She's not attracted to you and she just wants to spend your money. Proper garden tool. Guys, you need to understand that dating is two people who like each other, spending time with each other because they like each other. When she starts spending your money, it's not dating anymore. It's exploitation. As soon as you do a nice thing for a woman and expect a physical award, the nice thing is no longer a nice thing because you have now made it a disgusting, vile thing. So, doing nice things for a woman and expecting reciprocity is a disgusting and vile thing. Okay, noted. Because you're treating physical intimacy like it's a transaction. Yeah, we are. Know who we learned that from? Women. If you're a oncologist, a doctor who makes 300k a year girlfriend i want you to date a guy that makes a million plus a year that's all i'm saying don't date a scrub what don't date a scrub and that is treating the woman like she is a worker like this is her job and because you did something nice or you bought her dinner three times or whatever it may be you think she owes you time on her back you're goddamn right. Everything has a price. Hold up. Wait a minute. You know what? I got a solution for this problem. Hey, men everywhere, stop doing nice things for women. It's a disgusting and vile thing. I was in the industry for seven years, um, and I would sign this basic contract that basically signed my rights away. So, why did you sign it? <laughs> You look confused, boy! Yeah, I don't make any money from them being up there. Even if I did, I still wouldn't want them up there because I am a Christian now and um, I believe in modesty and saving myself for marriage, which I did. What? I believe in modesty and saving myself for marriage, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> After a seven-year career in the eggplant polishing industry, you saved yourself for marriage? Bruh. May God have mercy on your husband because divorce court will not. Have you ever thought about how the most likely reason men decided it was unattractive for women to be muscular, loud, and opinionated was to ensure that we're less likely to fight back physically? We are physically weaker, which many researchers argue is actually caused by men. You know what? That's actually true. Women are weaker because of men. Let me tell you how that happened. You see, back in the Stone Age, cavemen and cave women were physically exactly the same. No, really, Shirley was just as strong and tough as Steve. The problem was that Shirley also looked and sounded just like Steve. As in beard, deep voice, male pattern baldness, the whole shebang. And every time a caveman and a cavewoman would hook up, the cavewoman was like, I'm gonna rock your world, boy! And the caveman was like, bro, this sucks. It's like hooking up with one of my homeboys. So one day, all the cavemen gathered in their man cave and decided they were gonna pray to the gods for feminine women. Unfortunately, Gork and Mork were having sound issues, Thor was busy simping for Disney, and Slanish, well, I don't know what the hell Slanish was doing. So, the only one that heard their prayers was Morgoth. And Morgoth, being the evil rapscallion that he was, he showed up in disguise above prehistoric Earth, opened a bottle of Romanian sparkling water, which is like 30 cents a bottle, and sprinkled that stuff all over the Earth. 
And as soon as the cave women came in contact with the sparkling water, they stopped looking like half Thor Bjornstern and started looking like, well, women. And that's why men are stronger. <laughs> but real talk, biologically and historically speaking, men evolved to be stronger and tougher because they were the ones fighting, hunting and providing food for the women and children. See, men didn't leave women to fend for themselves. We carried you on our backs for millennia. And even in the modern age, where women are strong and independent and they don't need no man, 99% of civilization is still being built and maintained by men. We are still carrying you. That's why we're stronger. And that's the bottom line, cause don't go censor. <laughs> <laughs>